divert auxiliary power to the rear deflector shield. We definitely do. Since when do you know how to fly? 190 years old? You look great. It's a big day for Star Wars fans. Solo, a Star Wars story, hits theaters today. With more on this and other new releases, I want to bring in Richard Krauss, film critic and host of Pop Life. Hello. Nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. Big day. This is a big day for Star Wars series. fans. Yeah. You know, it, it'll be interesting to determine by Monday or Tuesday when the box office receipts are coming in, how big a day it was for Star Wars fans because there's a lot of Star Wars movies out these days. Every year, there's another one. We are now in the year where we get a standalone, and this is the look at the life of Han Solo. It answers questions like how he was able to do the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs and how he met Chewbacca and where the name comes from and all these things that fans have speculated on for 40 years or so. The thing that it doesn't have is Harrison for it. And that's going to be, I think, the, 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 the key to people's enjoyment here is whether or not they will accept another actor. His name is Aldrin Aaron Reich. He's a very good actor. You've seen him in Hail Caesar from the Coen Brothers, made a movie with Warren Beatty a couple of years ago. He's, he's been around. He's a good actor, but he's not Harrison Ford. The supporting cast in this movie, though, is fantastic. Donald Glover as Lando Calrissian brings this kind of swagger to the role that is really super fun, and the movie uh, really starts to, to go on an upswing when he enters, and then there's Chewbacca. Chewbacca is awesome in this movie. 190 years old, wow. doesn't look a day over 189, and uh, he's fantastic in this. He, oh. he, they give him more to do, he's got great facial expressions, he gets some of the biggest laughs in the film. Uh, you know, I just wish that the stakes felt a little higher. Mm. Because we know that Han, Chewie, and Lando go on to have more adventures after this, you kind of know how it ends. Right, you kind of right, know what goes yeah. on here. And so I gave it three out of five stars because it feels like the first of the Star Wars movies that's not essential. Okay, mm. all right. People will go and People are going to go anyway. anyway. Uh, the next movie is on Chessel? On Chessel Beach. Beach. This You just got back from England. You should be I able know, to I pronounce these things. <laughs> this is uh, a chamber piece, essentially. Two uh, actors, Billy Howell and the great Saoirse Ronan, play a married couple. We learn a little bit about their courtship, and then it's in a hotel room, and their honeymoon isn't going well. Their wedding night is not progressing in the natural fashion. And so it's an interesting uh, piece of work between these two actors. Once again, Saoirse Ronan shows that she is probably, well, certainly the best actress of her generation, the best actor working in movies today, I think, or certainly on her way to becoming that. She is authentic in every second of this movie and will erase all images of Lady Bird, her big hit from last year, from your mind. She is fantastic in this. So three and a half stars, mostly for Saoirse. Okay, and then the next movie is called Birthmarked, which you did not like. I did not enjoy this one. This is Matthew Good, Tony Collette, two really good actors who play scientists who want to finally get to the bottom of the question, is it nature or nurture that determines your personality? So they have a birth child, their own son, who is obviously the son of two scientists, so they want to raise him to be an artist. They're going to see if we just constantly bombard him with artistic ideas and make him write music and that sort of thing, if he will naturally come to it, or will there be his nature, which would be science, because both his parents were scientists, come to the fore. Then they adopt a couple of kids as well. One's from an extraordinarily violent family, and they're raising that child to be a pacifist. The other one uh, is from, what they say, a long line of dimwits, and they're trying to uh, turn that one into an intellectual. Uh, it is a, 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 a long-range science experiment that they're using their kids kids as subjects for, and it doesn't go particularly well, and neither does the movie. Uh, I, I wish I'd liked this more because I like these actors so much, but uh, it premise. really doesn't feel like it has an authentic moment in it from the start to finish, so I gave it one out of five stars. Okay, and finally, the gospel according to Andre. So, Leon, uh, Andre Leon Talley, 
you know him. If you sure do. And, yeah, you would, of course. <laughs> uh, if you've watched any fashion shows, he's always in the front row. He was an editor at Vogue and a Wintour's right hand uh, on Project Runway. He is a legend and a pioneer in fashion. And this is a look at his life, but it goes beyond the big capes and robes that he wears and the, and the, the blinged out rings and all the jewelry and things. To show you a portrait of a guy who grew up in the Jim Crow South, uh, who was not accepted immediately uh, uh, in fashion circles and, and the struggle that he had. And it's an interesting look at someone who you think we already know. So I give it four out of five stars. I like this movie a lot. I want to see that. All right, Richard, thank you so much. Thank you. You can watch more of Richard because this is not enough time <laughs> to be spending with Richard Krause. You can see him on Pop Life this Saturday at 8.30 Eastern and again Sunday afternoon at 2.30 Eastern.